I'm gonna watch this Earthling Ed video that was sent to me called Natural B12, the nail in the malnourished vegan coffin. I've been meaning to talk about B12 for a while, but you know, other stuff kept coming up. So yeah, let's watch what Earthling Ed has to say. Vegans don't get natural B12, which is why they should eat meat, dairy, and eggs. Well, that's according to the animal farming levy group, the AHDB, who in their new 2022 Wheat Balanced campaign said, did you know that beef, pork, lamb, and dairy are natural sources of vitamin B12? an essential vitamin not naturally present in the vegan diet. Meat and dairy naturally contain vitamin B12, which helps us get energy from food and stay healthy. Wow. So, should we not be vegan because of vitamin B12? B12 is a vitamin that is produced by microbes, such as bacteria. Humans can produce B12 in their gut. However, this B12 doesn't get absorbed by our bodies. It is instead excreted, meaning it doesn't help us meet our daily B12 needs. Well, we could absorb it after it's excreted, but that would mean practicing coprophagy. Yes, that is what that means. And no, please don't Google it. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. But I think a more appealing alternative is just to seek out an external source instead. So enter the animal farming industry to save the day, right? Well, let's dig into the details. In theory, the animals we farm could get or produce B12 naturally if they lived in an environment with soil that either contained the right microbes or was contaminated with feces. However, the vast majority of them are confined in factory farms where there is no soil, meaning that in practice, most of the animals we farm for food are supplemented with, wait for it, unnatural B12 supplements. However, there is a caveat to this, and that's ruminants like cattle and sheep who are raised on pastures. Because unlike us, these animals can produce and absorb B12 without an external dietary source, using bacteria in their digestive tracts. That being said, they do need a mineral called cobalt to do so, and the only way they can get that is from their diet. In theory, cobalt is found in soils, but in practice, this isn't necessarily a given, as cobalt-deficient soils have become a problem. In fact, according to a Scottish government-funded advisory group, over 15% of Scottish soils are at moderate risk of cobalt deficiency, and over 62% are at a high risk. And to quote them, most farms use intraruminal boluses, which in English means supplements for ruminant animals, which contain cobalt or drenches. Vitamin B12 injections are also available. In other words, both intensively raised animals and outdoor raised animals are, for the most part, unnaturally supplemented to get B12. So for most of us, whether we are getting B12 from a supplement or animal products, it will be just as unnatural. The only difference is whether that supplement is filtered through an animal or not. Not to mention that B12 is far from being a vegan-only problem. The studies have shown that up to 40% of people in Western countries have low or marginal B12 status, regardless of their dietary choices. So the AHDB's recommendation to get natural B12 is not even practical for most people anyway. But there's actually a way bigger flaw to what they're saying. If you think about it, by saying that B12 can only be found naturally in animal products, they are basically saying, this is the good way to get B12 because it's natural, while the vegan way to get B12 is bad, because it's unnatural. In other words, they're making the assumption that natural things are good and unnatural things are bad. But this is an irrational assumption which we don't even hold consistently. For example, anthrax, earthquakes, and wiping with a leaf are natural, but we consider them bad. While the antibiotics we use to treat anthrax, the seismographs we use to detect earthquakes, and the toilet paper we use to wipe are unnatural, but we consider them good. In other words, we consider things to be good or bad not based on how natural they are, but on how they cause or reduce suffering. So the relevant question is not how do we get B12 naturally, but does this way of getting B12 cause or reduce suffering? And in this case, we have a choice between getting it from foods that involve exploiting and killing animals in a system that is one of the major drivers of the climate crisis, or getting it from a supplement with no direct victims. Yeah, as it turns out, we don't need to kill animals to be healthy and thrive. A point the AHDB even admit themselves on their website, where they state, if you're cutting out meat, fish, dairy, and eggs, you can get vitamin B12 from fortified foods and supplements. Okay, so I've just let the video play through there. Um, let's start with the positive, or I don't know, positive, but the part that I agree with is him, where he was like, they're trying to make it sound like just because B12 is given in supplement form that makes it bad and then the b12 from the animals is natural so that makes it good i think that there is nothing wrong with taking a b12 supplement there is nothing wrong with that okay that's good you should do that but okay this is where this is where you need to actually look at reality look at the actual studies look at the actual youtubers that are making videos and everything like that and if you look at it as a whole the conclusion that you will come to is that humans are going to have to keep eating meat for their b12 if they want to live because if you look at the reality and you look at the real vegans and you look at the studies on vegans and you look at the vegan doctors on youtube dr leo venus if you look at the reality 
the average human appears to be too stupid, either too stupid or too dumb, to take their life-sustaining medication every single day. But when, in the case of these animals, they can line these animals up and give them their B12. That's not going to work in the general population. You're not going to get, if you want the whole world to go vegan, if you want them all to survive and have their B12, you're going to have to basically imprison them and have them line up every morning to get their pills and their medications like they're in the happy house because they're not taking their B12 like that. They're not doing it. They're just not. So they're going to have to have it put into their food in large amounts in the meat in order for them to get their B12 because the average person it seems to be too dumb to follow through or too forgetful to follow through and they don't get it that this is a life-sustaining medication and if you don't take it, you will die and your babies will die. But guess what? They still not doing it. They still not taking their B12 and breastfeeding their babies and letting their babies die. So bottom line is, you know, you might want to say, oh, but you can just take our B12 and I take my B12 and I take, yeah, I took mine too when I was vegan every day, but it's not adding up in the general population. A lot of these vegans are not taking their B12. If you look at studies on what percentage of vegans are B12 deficient, it's a really high percentage and it doesn't make any sense because all you got to do is take your pill. And these vegans, all they do is take it for a joke. There is a vegan that I was literally practically begging in the Instagram DMs, please take your B12. And he's like, no, I don't know. He doesn't want to take his B12. And I literally offered to him to offer to buy it for him. I was like, just make an Amazon wish list and I'll order it for you. He's like, no, no, no. Well, I want to argue you about the, the ethics of the vegan. Like, they're not taking it seriously. They don't get it. Okay. Now, if there is something out there you know, in this vegan diet, if there's something that exists, and yes, that B12, unfortunately, that exists, that if humans follow this specific diet, they have to take a life-sustaining medication to make it work and so their babies don't die, then the whole thing is a flop because humans aren't doing it. Freely up there after her dental appointment, oh yeah, I didn't take B12 for years, and, and I, you know, how she literally had a comment, a pinned comment under her blood test video, why well, I didn't take B12 for years and years, and I'm still alive, basically, was what she was saying, and she's like, well, how many of you can say the same? Like, it's a challenge to not take your B12. They're taking it for a joke for years, and they don't get it. Okay, Dr. Leo Venus, oh, I was, I, I, you know, B12 deficiency could cause neurological tingling sensations and failure of your neurological system. <laughs> I was too, I've been really busy in the gym, like. <laughs> Humans cannot do it, okay? You cannot put them all <clears throat> and expect them all and want them all to do some lifestyle that requires a life-sustaining medication because they're not gonna do it they're gonna die they're gonna fail it's gonna be a fail <laughs> you watch these vegans what i eat in a day and you never see b12 it needs to be in every single vegan video it's that deadly serious but guess what it's not that deadly serious because they ain't doing it they ain't doing it okay and they don't care maybe they just don't realize just how serious the b12 is because you you're not making you're not you know telling them just how serious this is and how babies are just up and dying on breast milk Maybe they just don't get it, you know, maybe, but even if they do get it, they, Dr. Leo Venus was listing all the symptoms and he still wasn't. <laughs> Fiber pedothenic acid is also within the normal range, B6, B7 or biotin, B8, B9, which is folate, everything is in the normal range, but here you see B12. And by the way, this is the stereotypical vegan thing. And I have to apologize to you. I've been vegan nine years and taking B12 supplements, but this year, Apparently, I was not good enough at taking them regularly enough. There have been periods of time where I've been working way too much, been super busy with work, haven't been able to take care of my health routines as much as I usually do. And the result is, as you see, B12 was actually a little bit low. And this is why I recommend every single person do a blood test every year, at most every two years, just to see, am I supplementing enough B12? Do I need to up the supplementation a little bit? Or maybe it's super high and you've been overkilling it, you know, and then you can actually take your supplementation a little bit down. But B12 is something you don't want to risk. If there's one point I want everyone to take home from this video is take your B12 supplements because the consequences of a B12 deficiency are very severe and many times irreversible. We're talking about irreversible nerve damage, not fun, not worth the risk.